Hey, this is Awesome Arcades. So in this video, I am going to show you this. This is our Typhoon Arcade. And so in the first part of the video, I'm just gonna kind of tell you about the cabinet, some of the options. I'll go through the shopping cart on the website so you can get familiar with what some of the choices are. Uh, and then for the second part of the video, I'm gonna tell you about what it can do, uh, the games that it can play. So the first thing I should just point out is that this is a seated machine. Right now, it is being shown with an optional base. So that base is a 12 inch lift. Without the base, you would sit down while playing the cabinet. So without the base, the cabinet is 62 inches. If you add the 12 inch base, it is 74 inches. The cabinet is 32 inches wide and it's 33 inches deep. One question that I get from a lot of people, you know, a household door, your standard household door is 30 inches. When this machine ships, let me grab this here. This part of the cabinet here, this is called the control panel. So when it ships, this piece is actually removed and it is mounted in some little brackets that sit like that. And so for that reason, when it ships, the side profile of the cabinet is only about 25 inches. Uh, so it's very important for any arcade game company that you sell machines that can fit through a standard household door. And so this one will definitely fit. <clears throat> I should also point out that the cabinet is on wheels and so these are what the wheels look like. There's four of these wheels on the bottom. In addition, there are these locking feet. And so when you get it in the location that you want, you can just screw those down and it will sit in place. That way it's not rolling around. Uh, so that's the base. So that base is just available during checkout. Uh, if you're curious, probably 90% of people add the base. And so uh, that sign above the monitor, that is called the marquee. And it's a little hard to see because I've got a spotlight on the cabinet just to show it to you, but that is backlit. So if this room was dark, that would be lit up. Uh, I have that option right there, the one that says arcade. I've also got one over here that says awesome. Now, if you didn't like those, if you wanted to get something different, let me just show you here. There is a company called Artwork Doctor and Artwork Doctor makes licensed artwork. Just to focus here. So I can't legally install that or ship that to you. Uh, now if you wanted like your business name or your family crest, I do have a graphic designer that could create something for you and I could install that. If you wanted to get that though, I mean, it's really easy to swap this. There's a bracket right here that holds this in place and there's just two screws. So if you take those screws out, that thing just slides right out and you could slide it back in. So again, I have the two choices, the arcade or the awesome, or if you wanted to get something custom that is, uh, something that you own the trademark to or your last name or you want something created by a graphic designer, I can do that. But if you needed something that's trademarked, contact uh, Artwork Doctor. There's a direct link in the website for the guy that does that. <clears throat> and so that's an option available to you. Now, this part of the cabinet here, there's a decal that goes over this. Uh, I just started doing this because I had so many different people request it. Um, I should just point out, people ask this sometimes. These are Sanwa, S A N. WA Sanwa competition joysticks and buttons and those are you know top of the line if you wanted to get something other than black there are pictures on the website of different buttons that I can order now when I buy these they come with the black buttons and so if I needed to buy different colored buttons I can do that but I do have to charge for that because I have to pay them you know pay for them separately but if you wanted to get something uh, just let me know in the product description. There are images and you can just email me if you're interested. Uh, in addition, I can get different colored joysticks and this thing I was just talking about here, this area, let me show you what it looks like. I can wrap that in a different type of material. And so this is something that I'm building for somebody right now. It's like a black carbon fiber. If you want, I've got like this orange carbon fiber. Uh, I've got blue. I've got like a pink carbon fiber. Yellow, there's a bunch of different pictures on the website. There's a company called Vivid Vinyl that makes automotive wraps. They're for like Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Um, but the decals that uh, they sell actually work really well for wrapping metal. So if you wanted to get something like that, just let me know. Uh, let's see. So this machine has a 32 inch LED wide viewing angle screen. There's a link in the website that'll tell you what wide viewing angle means. Uh, but basically laptops and arcade monitors are traditionally designed to be viewed from straight on. And if you've ever noticed, if you're looking at a laptop and if you kind of come off to the side, the more off to the side you get, the more difficult the screen can become to see. There's like a vanishing point where if you get too far off to the side, you can't see the monitor. 
So that is actually called a laptop effect. And the way that we get around that is we buy something called a wide viewing angle monitor. Wide viewing angle just means no matter how far off to the side you get, you're still gonna be able to see the gameplay. It's visible up to 178 degrees. A lot of times people will ask me, you know, what's different between your company and this other company? That's the first thing I would look for is make sure that they're using a wide viewing angle monitor. And so this is a 32 inch LED. Bear in mind that monitors are measured diagonally, so it's 32 inches across. And so this machine has the ability to play two different kinds of games. So in the arcade game world, there are games that go side to side. Those are called horizontal games. Horizontal game examples are games like Defender, Super Mario Brothers, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. So the other kind of game that exists in this world are games that go up and down. Up and down games are games like Donkey Kong, Frogger, Pac-Man. So traditionally, if you wanted to get a machine, you, you couldn't get a machine that could play sideways games and up and down games. And the reason for that is because of how the monitor would have to be installed. So traditionally, if you walked up to a Pac-Man machine, what you'd be looking at is, a, is an arcade where they took a TV like this and then they actually turned it on its side. And so if you tried to watch a movie on an 80s Miss Pac-Man arcade, the movie would appear sideways. And so, you know, five years ago, before game boards like the one that I'm going to tell you about in this machine, before that game board came out, if somebody said, hey, I want a machine that can play Mario Brothers and Miss Pac-Man, we couldn't do it. You'd have to get two different machines. Um, but this machine and the game board that I'm currently running, which I'm going to tell you about in the second part of this video, has the ability to display both vertical and horizontal games, which is actually a really cool feature. Uh, I should also point out that this cabinet here is shown with an optional trackball upgrade. The trackball is an option that's available during checkout. If you're not familiar with what a trackball is, it's almost like a spinning ball, like a mouse. It was used for games like Centipede, Millipede, uh, Missile Command. Now, you don't need the trackball. The games that I just mentioned do work with the joystick, um, but if you like those games, those are your favorite games, or you just like the idea of having a trackball, that is an option that's available during checkout. Uh, the trackball is also used on some bowling games, golf games, there's some horseshoe games. Uh, all right, so in the second part of this video, I'm going to go through the website a little bit, the product listing for this machine, and tell you more about that. All right, so I mentioned earlier about, you know, the game board that's in this machine. And the last part of this video, I'm going to talk about that, but I'm just going to briefly point out. So this is the game board. It's called a Pandora DX. This is by far the best board that's available in the industry right now. I've tried them all. And uh, uh, I bought that one on Amazon. You can see here it is. Get this thing to focus here. It was $87. That's also amazing because let me tell you. Advanced game boards like this that used to have, you know, the, the vertical and the horizontal games that have 3,000 plus games, those game boards five years ago were $450. And so I guess it's like everything. Uh, there's, what is it, something called Gordon Moore's Law. Gordon Moore worked at Intel and he basically came up with this concept that every 18 months, the computational speed of chips would double and the price would be cut in half. And so, anyway, that's an aside, but... Uh, the more advanced things get, the cheaper they appear to get. So, okay, I'm going to show you a couple of things on the website here that I think are going to be pertinent in your search. <clears throat> and so I assume at this point that you're probably shopping around and you maybe found my website through my advertisements. And I definitely understand that you don't know me and I am asking you to uh, trust my company with giving us two or $3,000 to buy a machine. And I know it, Certainly looks beautiful sitting here, but I definitely get that people have concerns or questions about the reputation of the company. You know, how does the shipping work? Uh, what's the warranty? So the first thing I would just like to point out is everything that you need to know about this machine is in the product description. And so you can get to the product description just by tapping the picture of the cabinet. In addition, if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the website, I encourage people to go to, let me get this to focus here, about us. So if you click that, I'm just gonna tell you about my business. You know, I'm a dad, I've got kids. My wife's a stay-at-home mom. This is my full-time thing. Uh, there's a video of me explaining to you how important I think reviews are, how I test the machines, how I pack them. Those are all important facts. So you can check that out under the About Us. Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, there's a, a, a direct link to the different game lists for the different game boards. And so I have eight different machines that I sell. You can see the different game lists there. Um, shipping, that's an important question that people ask about. So one of the things I'll just say 
a lot of people ask me about uh, what's different between you and some other companies. And one of the most glaring things that I found, and I recently just discovered this, I was looking at this company's website and I, I'm pretty sure that the biggest company around, um, I have a video on the website where I'll talk about it more, but um, I was looking at their shipping terms and in the terms it said, we are not responsible for any arcades that are lost that are lost or damaged in transit. If your machine is lost or damaged in transit, keep your paperwork, contact the shipping company and get reimbursed. And when I read that, I was, I was pretty shocked because, you know, if I buy a $3,000 riding lawnmower from Amazon and it gets lost in transit, it's not my responsibility to contact the shipping company and get my money. You know, they packed it, they contracted with the shipping company. If something happens to it, the shipper has to be responsible. If some company told me that my $3,000 arcade game got stolen or damaged and it's up to me to get my money, I would immediately stop payment on my credit card. And so to me, that's kind of a big red flag. Uh, that is certainly something that I would be concerned about. And so I can just tell you that I do buy full liability insurance for the cabinets. Now, of course, there's uh, some steps that you have to take regarding inspecting the freight, making sure you don't sign for it if there's anything wrong. Um, but yeah, there is full liability insurance. Now, I don't wanna scare you. Damage is incredibly rare. I might have one or two damaged machines a year. Um, but just knowing that if it did get damaged, another company is gonna tell me to kick rocks or I gotta get paid from someone else, that would, uh, that would trouble me. One thing I can tell you is, I've seen a lot of companies that'll put their cabinets in a crate and the crate is the exact size of the cabinet. And I understand why they do that, it's cheaper. It takes up less space on the truck and it weighs less. The problem is when you have the edges of the cabinet resting against the crate, even if you have foam protection in there, I've found that it, it increases the likelihood for dings and dents and scuffs. So what I've decided to do is I buy a big oversized pallet and it costs more, but in the long run, I've found that by creating a buffer zone around the outside of the cabinet so that nothing can rest against my freight, it really drops the claim rate. So if you get a chance, go to the shipping tab on the bottom of my website, and there you'll hear me. Uh, there's videos where I talk about the shipping and I kind of show you how we pack things up. There's also some pictures. In addition, you can click on the warranty tab here. I'm having a hard time getting this to focus. Under the warranty tab, I'm just gonna tell you that, you know, there's a warranty on the machine. There's a video of me explaining a little more about that, how that works. Uh, but yeah, there definitely is a warranty. All right, so the next part of this video, I'm gonna go up to the top of the website and tell you a little bit more about the actual product itself and show you uh, how you would add it to the shopping cart and then what the different options are. All right, so here we are on Awesome Arcades. First thing I would just like to point out, if you get a chance, check out my reviews. The reason I point that out is I get that, I mean, if I'm looking at a machine like this online and it's $3,000, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and look at the company's reviews. I'm gonna try to find them on Yelp. Uh, I wanna make sure that I can trust this company. Now, I've noticed a lot of other companies, they have really great reviews. They'll take a few procured or you know hand-selected good reviews and post them on the website. That's great, but where are the bad reviews? I mean, maybe they have bad reviews, maybe they don't. The problem is, if a company has the ability to modify their reviews, how do I know they're not just deleting the bad reviews? And so one of the great things I love about Google business is on Google business, those are not reviews that I can modify. You know, people go on my website, they post their feedback and for better or worse, they're going to tell me what happened. And so I just like to point that out because I have 100% five star reviews and I work very hard to make sure I get those reviews. To me, reviews are really the most important part of me being successful. And I, you know, I'm a small business owner. This is my baby. I put a lot of time and effort into trying to make sure that my business is successful and I'm in this to make money. And if I have a bad review, one bad review, if it's the right kind of bad review, you know, if it's, if it's like the shipment was late or, you know, a button broke, to me, that wouldn't be catastrophic. I don't want that kind of review, but if I saw that on some other company's website, it wouldn't freak me out. But if it's the kind of review where it says, you know, this game was nothing but problems, I can't get them to return my calls, that's the kind of review that would make me skip that company and move on to the next. And these are not the kind of sales where somebody is just going to cancel their order, I'm going to see it, you know, I'll be aware that I'm losing business. 
It's not that, it's just that people are gonna skip over my company and go to the next. So one bad review could potentially cost me you know, $50,000 in lost revenue because 100 people that would have maybe considered buying from me are now gonna skip my company. I am very aware of that. And so there's a few things that I do to make sure that I'm gonna continue getting five-star reviews. The first thing I'm gonna do is I will always answer my phone. If you call me, unless I'm sleeping or on the other line, I'm gonna pick up. If I am on the other line, I'm gonna text you and tell you that, and then I'm gonna call you back as soon as I'm off the phone. I mean, to me, there's nothing more frustrating than buying something from someone, and they're nice and responsive, and then as soon as they get your money, they're not returning your calls, or you're having a hard time getting a hold of them, so that is never gonna happen. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna make sure that I do is make this cabinet as nice as I can, and thoroughly test it before it ships. The last thing I want to do is ship you a machine that is malfunctioning. Okay, the first thing that would happen if I did that, it, number one, you might just say, I don't want it, send it back. And then I'm gonna to have to pay to ship it cross country back to me, which is really expensive. Or I'm gonna to have to hire someone locally to come out and try to fix your machine in your house. Or you're gonna leave me a bad review. Any one of those things would be catastrophic to me, not a good time. So I will do everything in my power to avoid that and I thoroughly test each machine to make sure that they're working exactly as they should before they ship. That's something I do personally, so it's not like I've got a crew of guys that might make a mistake. Every machine that leaves my warehouse is gonna be tested and inspected by me personally. Uh, let's see, so those are my reviews. If you get a chance, read them. They're not just stars, these are actually people that have you know, kind of written about their experiences posted pictures of their products, kind of told you about how things went. And uh, I will tell you this, it's actually really hard to get happy people to leave reviews. <laughs> I've probably asked 300 people to leave reviews and out of that, I've got about 50. Uh, but they are all five star reviews. And uh, I guess that's better than, you know, one star or three star, 300 three star reviews. Uh, okay, so here is the Typhoon product description. Now that's the machine that you're looking at right there. If you're curious, the cabinet with the base. That's the cherry wood cabinet with the base. That's the awesome marquee that I was telling you about, or that I showed you, I should say. And so, which one is it? So that's what the cabinet would look like without the base. Now just remember there are wheels on both versions, but that is a seated version. That is a stand-up version. So let me close that there. And so these are the buttons that I was talking about. If you're curious, and so one question I get from a lot of people, they say, well, what is that price range? What does that mean? So $21.95 is the base price. That's the base price for the seated cabinet without any upgrades. That is the maximum total price that you would pay if you got every single upgrade that's available down here in the shopping cart. Okay, now bear in mind, this price is before shipping. Shipping on this machine is a flat rate of $450. I have had people say that that seems expensive, but the actual cost of shipping is usually a little more than that, especially to the East Coast. Uh, gasoline prices are really high right now. So, uh, okay. So when you come down here, you're going to see the shopping cart. Now bear in mind, there's a ton of information below the shopping cart. So make sure you keep scrolling down. Um, but the first option you've got is to add the base. The next one is for the warranty. So there is a three year warranty that's included. You can add an extended warranty. I don't think you need the extended warranty. Uh, I had so many people asking if they could buy an extended warranty. That's why I put it there. But, uh, you know, the vast majority of people that get it will never use it. Marquee, there's your option there. Now the trackball, we talked about the trackball option. You don't have to get that, but if you wanted it, that's there. So these PlayStation controllers, I'm gonna cover that in the last part of the video, but basically this board has the ability for you to plug in two PlayStation controllers, and then you can do four players. So you can do games like NBA Jam, where player one and player two can be the Chicago Bulls. You could be like Dennis Rodman and uh, Scottie Pippen. And then players three and four on the PlayStation controllers, you could be the Utah Jazz, you could be like John Stockton and Carl Malone. So that is a really cool feature. Again, I'll talk about that more when I cover what that board is. And then the last one you've got here is the cabinet color. Of course, you got black and cherry. If you're interested, here's a video of me and uh, just a picture of my family, me telling you about why you could trust me, tell you a little more about my business philosophy. I kind of touched on that in this video. I go into that in more detail here about how important reviews are to me. Uh, let's see, let me turn this down. I didn't realize I was gonna start auto playing. Okay, just trying to see if there's anything else that I missed. Um, direct links to 
the board, what vertical games are, what horizontal games are. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of information in the product description. This uh, video here is gonna tell you more about the Pandora game board. Uh, but other than that, I think we're good to go for this part of the video. And, uh, okay. So the next part, I'm gonna show you the game board and uh, the different games that are on it. All right, so in this part of the video, I'm gonna be telling you about the Pandora DX game board. Now, one thing I should just point out, I mean, this machine plays what are called JAMA game boards. JAMA is a programming language. It's J-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. That is an acronym. It stands for Japanese Amusement Merchant something. I forget, you can look it up on Wikipedia. Basically, it's just a universal programming language that arcade game companies in the early 80s settled on uh, so that different game boards would be interchangeable between different machines. It's almost like MS-DOS or Linux. So any JAMA board is compatible. That being said, I have done my homework and I've tried every multi-game JAMA board that's available on the market. And this one, the Pandora, is by far the best. Now, Pandora is a company and they come out with a new version of their Pandora game board uh, every, maybe every 12 months or 18 months or so. So this is, I recently had a guy, I told him it was a brand new Pandora board and he was kind of concerned that maybe it might have bugs because it was the new, a new version. And it's not a new company, this is just their latest release of the board. So, uh, but this game board does a ton of stuff that no game board prior to this was able to do. And so, first thing I'm gonna show you is, I bought this game board on Amazon. It was $87. Now I mentioned that earlier in the video and if you haven't read it yet, maybe you have, I do not include this game board. The reason I don't include this game board is because of how much it would cost for me to officially license this game board and then sell it in a coin operated arcade. Okay, so you are gonna buy that game board on Amazon. There's a direct link in the website and you're probably asking yourself, well, how do I put the board in? Inside the cabinet, you're gonna find something that looks like this. This is a female part. On your game board, you're gonna find these little teeth. This almost looks like an old Nintendo cartridge, if you've ever seen the you know, early Nintendo cartridges. But basically, this is your male part. This is your female part. You're gonna take these teeth here. See that little notch? You're gonna match that notch up with that black line. You're gonna take this female part and that male part, and you're gonna take that, and you're gonna press that down on there. Now, I'm holding the phone with my left hand, so I can't really do it. Um, but all you do is push that on there. Once that's on there, there's two other things you got to connect. There's a monitor cable, which is just like an old computer monitor. There's a little monitor plug in in the back. So you plug that in. And then if you got the trackballs or the PlayStation controllers, there is a USB cable, right? Which is just like your cell phone charging cable. And that goes in the side. And so when you get the machine, there's a little lid on the front. If you open that inside, you're going to see that setup. So basically this is my USB for the trackball. Back there is that little thing that I just showed you, which is called the JAMA harness, a little hard to see. And that is the monitor. Now that's a USB stick that I've added, and that's probably the coolest part about this board. So here are the things that this game board does that none of the other game boards do that I've ever found. First of all, it has 3000 games already included. So it pretty much has every arcade game ever made from like 1977 through 2005. This game board has more Atari, Commodore, and 70s arcade games than any other game board that I've ever seen. And so most of the game boards that you're gonna look at, first of all, if you wanna exit the game, you just press and hold the one player start button for three seconds. When you do that, you can either continue, so you kinda of pause the game, you could exit, or you can save your progress, and then the next time you turn the machine on, you can load up that save point and pick up where you left off. That is something that is not available on any other board. It's kind of an aside. Uh, but this game board has a lot of classic video games from the late 70s and early 80s. And so it's got the first basketball game, the first baseball game. I think this is either a Commodore 64 or Atari. Uh, fire truck, Sprint. In addition, it has tons of modern 3D games, like PlayStation 2 games. But the coolest thing about this board, 
as I referenced that USB card or that, uh, uh, uh why can't I, <laughs> I'm having a brain fart. This thing, the USB stick, uh, the memory stick. So this game board has the ability to download and add games. In addition to the 3000 arcade games, coin operated arcade games. Well, so it has coin operated arcade games. It has Nintendo games, Sega games, PlayStation games, uh, something called TurboGrafx-16, which was a, a gaming console that came out in the 80s. It also has Sega Genesis. But if there's a game title that's not on this board that you really want, you can download and add that to a USB stick and plug it in the back of the board. So the board has built in what are called emulators. So in essence, in addition to the chip that has all the games, this game board inside has a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, a PlayStation 1, a Sega Genesis, and then it has uh, an emulator called a MAME, M-A-M-E. MAME is kind of a catch-all for different arcade games. But basically, if you go on YouTube and you search, and I have a direct link on the website to this, or text me and I'll send you the video. If you search download games to Pandora DX, there's a seven minute video that shows you a website that you can go to and you can download for free unlimited numbers of games from those five types of consoles, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Sega Genesis, and MAME, put them on the, on the USB stick and play them for free. And so the board has 3000 games, right? So if you'll notice, up to 3,000, 2915, 2925. First of all, if you press down and hold it, it'll rapid scroll. If you press right on the joystick and hold it, it will rapid scroll one page at a time. In addition, there's a search function. I'll show you that in a second. Anything above 3,000, these are games that I downloaded for free. And so Paperboy, now Paperboy is already on there, but that was my first test game just to see if it worked. Spy Hunter Gauntlet. Um, the original arcade version of Punch-Out. But uh, to me, the best game in the world is The Legend of Zelda. That was my favorite game. I'm 44, and I remember playing that in fourth grade nonstop. Also, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Uh, but that feature right there, the fact that I can download and add unlimited numbers of games, that, to me, was uh, the coolest thing about this board. One of the other things that I really like is this game title list. Most of the games that I've seen, uh, first of all, it does have a favorites list, so you can add up to 100 games onto your favorites list. Most of the other game boards, boards that I've seen, so all these game boards are made in China, and every other game board that I've seen, whoever did the translation, some of them are really bad. And if you're trying to do a spell search, if you're trying to search for the title of the game based on the spelling, some of them even had like the first letter of the title of the game spelled wrong. And so... It's obvious whoever translated this game was a native English speaker. I have not found a single typo. In addition, every single game that you go to load up and play works exactly as it should. On a lot of the other boards that I've seen, they'd have the title of the game, but it would be glitchy. It wouldn't be the original version. You know, maybe the audio was a little different. They'd have like Donkey Kang, you know, and it was a kind of a bootleg version of Donkey Kong where the, the music was a little bit off. These are the identical original versions of the games. They've all been tested and they're, you know, exactly as they should be. Uh, let's see. The other thing that I really liked was that there are no duplicates. So some of the other games that I've seen, they seemed like they were less concerned with the quality of the games and more concerned with advertising a targeted number. So there's some game boards that say, oh, we have 3,500 games. Game King is an example. I've seen other companies selling a a machine with 3,500 games. Well, you go to look at the game list and they have 75 versions of Street Fighter 2. And I don't mean different versions, I mean, excuse me, they have 75 listings of the same game. And so there's 10 games per page, there's literally seven pages of Street Fighter. And so it's obvious they're just trying to advertise, oh, we have 4,000 games. No, you have 3,930 games and then 70 Street Fighter 2 versions. Uh, or, or listings. And so they didn't do that on this board. Every game board, the game that you see is uh, uh, an original single listed game. The other thing that I really like about this game board is that it is lightning fast. Whatever the processing chip in here is, it's the most current one. So I kind of say that like the Pandora is like the iPhone 13, right? It's like the newest, latest, greatest thing. A lot of the other game boards that I've played, uh, they're really slow when they load. Also some of the graphics are pixelated. There's a company called Game Elf, for example, this. 
There's a lot of other companies that are selling this with 3,500 games or 1,162 games. You know, this board came out in 2014. And at the time, it was awesome. Uh, but it's slow and glitchy and pixelated when you compare it to the Pandora. The Pandora also has a really easy to use interface. So you see down here, it says function select. If you press the one player start button, you can see that you've got recently played games. Here's your search function. And then it gives you subcategories by genre. So you've got 3D games, action, fighting, flying, shooting. In addition, you can create a favorites list. And so the setup on this board is actually really simple. So on the side of the board, there's a little button right there. So I'm gonna put my finger on the button, but not press it. I'm gonna show you the screen so you can see what it looks like when I press that button. So when you do that, it's gonna take you into the setup screen, okay? So in the setup screen, before I ship you the machine, this is how I test them. So I plug this board in, I come up here to IO test, because it says A for okay. So first of all, that's A, B, C, D, E, F. So we're gonna go into A. And when you do that, this is how we can test to make sure all the buttons and joysticks are working. And that way I don't ship you something that's not working. So to exit out of that, it says you're going to press the one player start button and the A button at the same time. We're going to come back here. And so when you get the board, you're going to want to set it, or you can set it on either coin operated mode. So this is a functional coin operated machine. It can take one, two, three, or four coins per credit. That's how you'd go to change that. Uh, exit game mode, hold the one player start button for three seconds. That's how you leave a, a game. Um, but this down here is what I wanted to show you. Gamepad setting. So you can actually map it. If you're gonna get the PlayStation controllers, I leave mine sitting up here. This is what they look like. So you can map it so that that's player one, this is player two, that's player three, and that's player four. Uh, or you can mix and match. You could do this as player one and two, that's player three and four. That's what that does there. Uh, and then under here in game setting, this is how you'd set up the favorites list. So first of all, you can actually increase and decrease the difficulty level and number of lives on a lot of the games, which is really cool, especially for some of the older games like Donkey Kong, which is really hard. So the factory default for Donkey Kong, you're gonna get three lives, three Marios per credit. You can bump that up to five. Uh, now, if there's some games on there that you know you'll never play, or maybe you don't think they're appropriate for your kids, you can deactivate them. So just go next to the game and press the B button. It'll turn it off. Now, it doesn't delete the game, it just deactivates, deactivates it so that when you turn the machine on the next time, it's not gonna be on the list of games. You can always add it back after the fact. <clears throat> and then this is for the favorites list. So if there's a title that you like, using the cursor or the joystick, you press the A button next to it, and it will add a star. Let me see what did I do here. Oh, I gotta go into edit game list by pressing the C button. And then to favorite something, you just press the A button. So we'll go down here to this. I'm going to press A. You'll notice it adds a star. And then when you're done, you just go back to save settings. Always make sure you save your changes. Save and exit. Okay, I'm trying to see if I forgot anything. So this game board. Oh, and if you're curious what games can use the PlayStation controllers so you can do four players, uh, it lumps them all together. So you could just go to the search and come down here to the four player games, or they're just the three thousands. So you can see all these games, three player, four player. And uh, okay. Oh, the last thing I'll just point out. So this trackball port, this is a multi-purpose port. Okay, so it runs the trackball, it runs the PlayStation controllers. So what you can do is you can put in a multi USB strip like that, and then you can do your trackball and your PlayStation controllers. There is a company in England right now that just did a, uh, a Kickstarter, which is like a fundraising campaign that they do online to create a light gun. There's information about that on the website. If you're curious, you could read that. There has never been a company that has made a quality light gun that interfaces well with the LED TVs. If you Remember the late 80s, there was a game called Duck Hunt, which came out for Nintendo, and it had a little light gun that you point at the screen and you could shoot the ducks. That type of light gun worked only with a CRT, or a cathode ray tube, kind of an 80s technology television. And believe it or not, there has not been a company that has made a quality, commercially viable light gun until just recently. And so, 
there's a light gun that's going to be coming out in the next probably six to 12 months. They're already selling prototypes. This guy's raised millions of dollars. There's a huge demand for it. Um, but I expect them to be commercially available maybe by Christmas of this year, but if not, uh, in the spring of 2022. This board is the only board that has a port that you can plug in the light gun. So if you're looking at like a 3500 board or any of these other boards, they do not have a USB port. And so you're not going to be able to add that light gun. And so that's definitely something you want to consider when you're looking around at your different game boards as well. Okay, uh, this video is really long as usual, but a lot of information to cover and uh, ignore any flubbings or things I may have repeated. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. Thanks.